Over the years, Nokia has experimented with several different phone designs like the 8910. That's just the most awesome thing ever. They have the 8850, which doesn't have the slide mechanism, but, you know, still looks pretty awesome and looks fairly luxury. But the one luxurious phone that they did release back in 2005 was the Nokia 8800. This thing was an expensive thing. This thing was like the Galaxy Fold of 2005. If you had one of these, you were saying that you had some serious money because this thing, what Nokia says it is, it's a luxury mobile phone. It has a sophisticated slide mechanism that uses premium ball bearings crafted by the makers of bearings used in high performance cars. And if you slide it up, you'll feel that it's, it is very smooth. And this Nokia 8800, I actually found a couple of years ago at a market for $5. It didn't have a battery, so I bought a battery for it, and I went to charge this up for the review, and it was dead, so I had to buy another battery for it, and now it's alive. But this thing is absolutely premium. It feels quite good in the hand, quite solid at 134 grams. And to find one of these in reasonable condition like this is fairly impossible now because these things go for quite a lot of money. Spec-wise, though, you're not looking at much. It's only got 64 megs of internal memory, the 600 milliamp hour battery, which is this thing here. They shipped with two of them, and, well, people couldn't even keep this phone running for a whole day even with both batteries. So that kind of explains why. And this is an OEM one, I believe. Oh, well, who cares? It's got a TFT LCD with 208 by 208 pixels. The rear camera is SVGA, which is 800 by 600. It has Bluetooth. It runs on the Nokia Series 40 OS. After this model, they released the 8800 Sirocco Edition, which has a little bit better specs and looks a little bit nicer. And then they released the 8800 Art Edition, which is original, sapphire, carbon, and gold, which um, I don't have any of them. I only have this one. I'm lucky to have this one. But the only quirks that I have with this is the fact that the D-pad is just so weird on this thing. Because if you try and push the up button, your thumb is basically getting stuck on the sliding mechanism, just like that. While you can use it like that, I noticed that I just press a whole bunch of buttons at the exact same time. You've got the two option keys just here at the top of the lip, just like so, the D-pad and all that sort of stuff just there. But if I try to use this, I'm pressing a number of buttons at the exact same time because the keypad's just so cramped. It's, yeah, you can see many videos of people reviewing the 8800 and how classy it was back in the day. Also, this reminds me of something, this camera bit here. It's sort of like, um predicting the teardrop notch, if you get what I mean. Ah, Nokia, you were so ahead of your game. If you want to see reviews, check up on them, because there's many people who have done them. I am not here to review the 8800, although I've just went on for over about five minutes. I'm here to show you what could have been the 8800 version 2, if Nokia had released it. But thanks to China, I have one. I just want to show you the battery. It's made by Cameron Sino, whoever you are, but uh, thanks for the battery, mate. Appreciate it. Also, the phone is made in Germany. So what happens if you want the Nokia 8800, but you can't afford the high price tag, which I actually don't know how much this was retail. I should have put it at the start, but that's okay. What if you wanted one of these, but you couldn't afford one, so you went with what could have been the version 2 one? You'd get this. Everything is looking fairly good, and honestly, you'd probably say... Hang on a sec, is that a prototype or something? Because look at it. Nokia at the top. You got what looks like a 2.4 inch LCD there. You got the stainless steel body. The lip just there, just like the real deal. Obviously, slightly taller LCD as opposed to that one. You know, you got the back camera here, which is actually on the back and not integrated into the slider mechanism. They both slide up like so, but there's a catch. Literally, there is a catch. This is quite a stiff mechanism, whereas this just boop. Honestly, this one works a lot better than this one here. That just goes straight up. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit stuck. And in terms of I.O. as well, on the original 8800, you've got the bigger style Nokia charger, which I can't remember what that's called, two gold pins for something, probably docking it somewhere, and then a 2.5 mil headphone jack. This one, you've got just a micro USB port. Now, when I actually bought this, also at a flea market, the micro USB port was completely missing from this, so I had to get it repaired and get a fresh one installed on there, and that is what I have. And it all works. Everything seems to work perfectly fine, 
and you've just noticed that I just was able to pull the back off like so, because there is little buttons here that are supposed to eject the back door, but they don't for some reason. I hope by this time you figured out that this is a clone that we're looking at, and we're not looking at a prototype Nokia phone, although it'd be really cool to have a prototype Nokia phone. This is far from one, unfortunately, and you will see soon. Inside of the battery door, there's some text just printed on there. It's like a serial number and stuff to tell you that you've got a quality Nokia 8900E. So that's what this is called. It takes a BL4U battery, which is 1000 milliamp hours, which is all good. But inside of the phone, originally when I bought this and had a look at it all, I've went, is this actually real? You've got a Nokia Care sticker from 2010 just there. The mini SIM, the Nokia Corporation made in Finland, with the type being RM233, which actually matches up with versions of the 8800. But you'll see that this is called the 8900E. The telltale sign is that little sticker just there. It could have been repaired by someone at some point and they've chucked one of their little dodgy Chinese stickers on there. Maybe, possibly. As far as I can tell with this one, it's definitely a clone, it's nothing special. But they went to all that effort. This also has two gigabytes of internal memory printed on there. No version of the Nokia 8800 series was ever released with two gigs of internal storage. They were released with 64 for the original, one gig for the Sirocco or Sirocco edition, uh, one gig for the art edition, and four gig for the carbon art as well as the gold art. So two gigabyte one just doesn't exist. Like I said, this is the imagining of what a prototype of a second version of this would be. And as for weight, this is 134 grams. This is far less than that, definitely for sure. Even with the battery installed, it's probably about 100 grams. But even though it feels premium, it looks premium and stuff, if I say that, it just lingers with a bit of a cheap feeling that's all now for the whole sake of this i'm going to put a sim card in here to see if i can call it i don't think i can but we'll try anyways we will have to open this phone at one point i do realize this and we also have to do it because of one reason you'll start to see soon don't worry it's all good there we go see the gap between the back cover and those buttons it's just not put together that very well but you know it works all right well the power on the device is actually this button here like so click in because I just done it there we go ah yes that sound yeah unfortunately it is a clone it tried it tried so hard but in the end it just doesn't matter uh, I don't think it's 3g I believe it's only 2g only the original unit was 2g only so this probably would be 2g as well we've booted up into this luxurious based s40 theme just here but straight away, what I was talking about on this one for the keyboard, this is nothing compared to this. If you wanted to hit up on the D-pad, you've got barely no room to do so. It is almost impossible to do that. And if you do, you're sticking your thumb in between that little gap, hoping you'll end up hitting the up button. The other buttons just feel absolutely dead. They have nothing to them. This is what the dialer looks like as well. And then when you get to like zero as well, you have the same issue. Your thumb's going to be hitting the bottom lip of it. And also this area does move because it's very, very loose. We'll get to that in the teardown. Telltale sign straight away that this is going to be a clone or a fake, whatever, is that the keypad is just not as premium feeling as it should be. As with all Nokia phones, even the cheapy Nokia phones back in the day, the keypads were absolutely brilliant. This is just, yeah another story. But you've got two option buttons just here, like so. You've got call and call end. Your T9 numeric keypad. The side, you've got the speaker just there, and the supposed 2 megapixel camera smack bang on the back there, as well as the Nokia branding, just like so. And there's an always-on display. Not anymore, though. Zooming right into our crystal clear LCD on this thing, it's a very washed out LCD actually, we can have a look at the basic functions of the 8900E. So if we go into menu, you can see we have a grid style. So, oh, see what I mean? I'm going to be hitting a number of buttons at the same time. Maybe if I did... No, this is not going to work. Maybe I just press 1, it'll go to it. There we go. You've got SMS, you've got MMS, you've got chat, email, voicemail server, all that sort of thing. You'll actually find that this is running the Java operating system that we've seen on some of the iPhone clones, but it's got an S40 series skin on it. Let's you save and edit contacts and contact related information to the phone. That's great. Contacts obviously probably doesn't have contacts in it because I think I've wiped this. I'll just have to press two because I can't press it, man. I can't press up on the D-pad because it's just, 
Oh, I can do it now. There we go. Log, there'd probably be nothing in there but the usual stuff. Uh, we'll come back to settings. Gallery. So the phone here says four gigabytes of internal memory. And as you can see, there is folders on here. And I hear you screaming behind your keyboard. S'mores, you said there was two gigabytes of internal memory. Now you're saying that there's four gigabytes? What's wrong with you, man? And well, um, that's because there is a feature on this that you have not been told yet. We will get to it very soon. But in gallery here, we've got all the photos, audio, and all that sort of stuff, which I will test. I will get to that. But for now, don't worry about this. In media, obviously, we've got camera, video recorder. We also have media play, which plays your videos. Audio play, which plays music. Image viewer, which shows pictures. Sound recorder, which records sound. FM radio, which is the FM radio. So I wonder if we click this, would it work? Please plug in your phone. Okay. All right, and that's basically it for media. In organizer, let's have a look at the alarm. That's what it looks like. Calendar. To-do list, which says wake up. Grab a brush and put on a little makeup. You wanted to. Why'd you leave the keys upon the table? You wanted to. Calculator. Looks like that. Which uh, I think we've seen before. Stopwatch. Typical stopwatch. Yep. And NY stopwatch. See what I mean? MediaTek. The Java based OS. Oh, listen to the D pad. It's like the most stiff and spongiest D-pad you'll ever see. Not that you'll be able to relate to the tactile feedback of it, but you know what I mean. Includes multimedia and entertainment features available in the phone. Well, we're going to get to that, because in apps, we've got games, puzzle. I wonder what this is. Oh, look at that. We've seen that before. Oh, I'm not going to go through that. But we've got game setting, though, which is just the background. No, nope. Collection. World clock, mm, getting close. Unit converter, yeah, currency converter. Ah, currency converter. We've seen that before. Yes, we have. Java, oh, it's a dartboard. Okay. Empty, okay. Can I install Java games? We're going to try that as well. Uh, web, WAP and data account, but obviously there's no Wi Fi on this thing, so I can't do basically anything. I can go to home page and also connection failed. And that's about it. You can also notice that the fonts are off on this because it's not using the Nokia fonts. It's using the MediaTek fonts, which they've tried to make close to the Nokia fonts. You understand what I'm saying. Uh, please go back. Please go back. Then we've got calculator just there as well. Opera Mini. Oh, Opera Mini. Whoa, I don't know if that was all glitched up there or whatever. I have to look back during editing, but I was looking at the viewfinder on my camera and everything was just yellow and weird. And oh God, it's not working. All right, cool. Uh, wild sets. Was that? No, wid sets. <laughs> what is wid sets? I don't know, but I'll have to Google what wid sets is. And that's pretty much it. So let's jump into settings. Profiles. General. Customize. Uh, let's put the volume down. Oh, it's on seven. That'll do. So you've got tone setup, volume, alert type, ring type, extra tone, answer mode. So we'll go to tone setup. Incoming call. So let's start at the top. I'll have to correct myself here. I'm not too sure if these are ripped off the 8800 or later series ones. I'm not too sure. That's probably off the actual 8800. Sounds slightly dead. Sounds funky. That sounds funky, man. 2005 Techno is sick. Why does this sound familiar? Do the conga, maybe? Put the thing in the coconut and drink it all up? I don't know. Ooh, synth wave. Okay, these ringtones are kind of sick. 
Oh dear lord, these won't borrow it off the 800. Let's just press every key on the piano. Whoa. Oh Jesus. That's like the background of a rap song, I swear to god. That sounds like a level out of Sonic, possibly. Sounds straight out of Silent Hill, possibly. Or from Hell itself. Either way. Oh, some. Straight off the NES, this one. Straight off the NES. Some bootleg game has this on it. Uh, some poor kids attempted a ringtone, I guess, in Melody Composer. Ah, oh. um, Mario Kart 64, that cow level, Moo Moo Land. It's just ringing, clapping, and just... I really hope these weren't on the actual 8800, I'll have to check. Oh, something from Crash Bandicoot. On GBA. One of those ones. Ah, familiarity. I probably butchered that word. That's someone's recording, just there. And that's it. That's the ringtones. Actually, I kind of like them, mostly. So that's pretty cool. Um, power on, you can choose... Why is it the same? Oh, hello. Oh my god, there's a lot of them. Okay, tone one. That's the one it should be, so I'll select that. But tone two is... Oh, it vibrates. Oh, special. Six. What was that at the end there? Fairly basic. Ah. Just like a lullaby. Ah. Okay, well, why no vibrations working on this? Cool. Okay, well, it's stuck with uh, tone one. Cover open. You slide it open, it makes a noise, you know. But come on, do something cool. No. no. No, you know what, just forget it, it's fine. In themes, we have chandelier. Light Art, Dragon, Sunrise, and Spiral. It is set to Spiral at the moment, but I need to set it to... Oh dear lord. So, what does Chandelier look like? Obviously, I didn't do anything. Oh, so Chandelier's just changed the colour of it? Is that it? Oh no, it does change the background. Hang on a second. Hang on, I am confused. So, Chandelier looks like a building at night. Light art is a bunch of dice. Dragon is the chandelier. Sunrise is not a sunrise. And spiral is... Well, probably a spiral. I'm gonna just stick with spiral. That didn't confuse the hell out of me at all. Uh, display, wallpaper. We've got... Image 1. Oh, look at that gif, man. Wow. Image 2. Oh, okay. Probably stick with image 1, actually. Image 3. Image 4. In image 5, okay. But you can do user define, which you can choose on the 4 gig memory card that's in here, the 4 gig one. Screensaver, we've seen it came up for like 5 seconds. What can we do with this one? So you can just choose pick. Okay, all right. that's, yep, no worries, man. Uh, display brightness, I think it's as bright as it's going to get. That's cool. Navigation key icons, that's okay. Slide animation. I 
I see. Show operator name. Clock type. Oh, that's the one that came up. Uh, date and time. All that sort of thing. My shortcuts. Connectivity. Bluetooth. We don't need to check for Bluetooth stuff. It works. Schedule power on and off. Greeting text. We can have the greeting text to say but or something funny if you want. Uh, flight is in normal mode. Sensor is on. I wonder what the sensor is. Call setup, call ID, all that sort of thing. Nothing really that important. Configuration, network selection, preferred networks. Optus is there, and I put an Optus one in, but it's probably GSM only, which sucks. Security, all that sort of thing. Uh, restore factory settings, and that's about it on this one. So now, usually, here's the point where I would have done the camera test and all that sort of thing, but I haven't done any of that yet, obviously, because I want to show you inside of the device first. So... If I do the slidey, oh, look at that. Whoa. So now, if I was to go ahead and power this off, there's the screensaver, lock wallpaper, thingamajiggy. I think it was a mistake zooming into it like that. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. We need to put a memory card in this thing. Do you want to just have a guess where the memory card's located? Because feel free. About here somewhere, I think. Or oh, just here. I'm actually not too sure. I've taken it apart before. But we'll basically do the teardown now so then I can show you guys inside of this thing instead of doing a teardown at the end because I need to get into this. I think it uses two Phillips head screws. It does. It uses two Torx and two Phillips. Yeah, instead of doing a teardown at the end, just do it now. Get it over and done with. And then do speaker, audio, and all that sort of thing. And then we can call this one a video because hopefully it shouldn't have gone on that long even though I've rambled on long enough about the 8800 and how wonderful it is and how much I wanted one as a kid but no one would get me one because it was like a thousand dollars or possibly even more. Who cares? All right. Shush. Shush, s'mores. Shush. All right. Here we go. You're allowed to come out. There we go. Beautiful. So there we go. Oh, oh, screws, screws, screws. Looking at this... It has been water damaged. You can see a bit of rust just there. And what looks like water residue or cheap plastic, whichever the one. But you can see the um, the micro USB port that's there. It's just scratched out completely. So yeah, I got one soldered back on there. There you go, folks. That's what you were looking for. And there it is. The two gigabyte micro SD card, which comes up as four gigabytes for some unknown reason. I don't think this is required to run the phone. It shouldn't be, but we'll see. But as we can see here, there's actually a couple of chips on here. I've got one that looks like a MediaTek MT6226BA. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. We've got a expansion module just there, a MediaTek probably power IC just there as well. But I will take photos of all these and make sure that I'll let you guys know what exactly these are during editing and stuff. So yes, this just comes off like so. And you can see the uh, supposed German engineering of this device, which is literally just two springs that they've put in there and went, hey, good enough, man. But I'll keep that on because I don't want the springs flying about everywhere. I'll never be able to find them again. We can take the display ribbon off and I'm pretty sure the entire thing just lifts out. It took me a while, but I seen it that there was a uh, conveniently located hole just here, which holds the speaker into place. And it comes off just like so. But that's your little speaker just there, which does have a bit of adhesive on the back, which they did not remove for some particular reason, but they always seem to do that. Um, that just came off again. That's okay. We have many parts of this device. I have to be really careful because this is a collectible, I believe. Even though it is in stock somewhere online, I just want to be super... Super careful with this. Okay, there we go. And that's it. So we do have some information just there, which does say it's an 8800. Also, there's a name. It's probably that test point there, but it says Mark Futical. What have you done, Mark? You silly bastard. Why is there a weird looking smiley face just there? Look at a derp. Uh, 2010. Yeah, that's about right. That's what it said on the Nokia Care sticker. And look at that. German engineering right there. My God. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's basically all we need to do. I think Mark is um, for the test points because there's one up there and one there. But yeah, that's the motherboard itself. The camera is literally just a little nubbin that'll just disconnect and reconnect like a little Lego. And yeah, there's a bunch of chips on there and stuff. We've got one up there as well. As I said, I will let you know during editing all the specifications and all that sort of thing of this device so then you know what's going on and I know what's going on because I, at the moment I don't really know what's going on. But yeah, anyways, there you go. That is the whole entire motherboard just there. What I'm thinking of doing, instead of replacing the SD card with another one, 
with my one that's got all my stuff on it. I'm actually going to just put this one back in here, connect it to my computer, or just put this in my little SD card thing, majiggy, copy all the files onto it, and then put it in here. That might be the smarter idea, I think. All right, back together. Have I fixed the sliding mechanism? Nope, still exactly the same. Should have put some WD-40 in it, but that's okay. I've also noticed the LCD is just slightly cut off, just a little tiny bit, but it's fine. It's fine, it's perfectly fine. So I was able to put the audio and stuff like that onto here, so that is all good. I will keep this SD card in here. I connected this to my computer and it did recognize and it did come up as four gigabytes. But as we've seen, it's only two gigabytes and I've yet to Google those chips that are inside of it. Let's come straight into camera though, which is very, 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 very basic. And I'm pretty sure camera setting, shutter sound, all this is straight from the MediaTek branded devices. Uh, image setting, there you go, 1280 by 1024, or 320 by 240, or 160 by 120, or 640 by 480. So obviously we're gonna stick with that. Okay, and the image quality is gonna stay at high as well. In video recorder, looks very familiar, doesn't it? Camcorder settings, camcorder settings. Uh, everything is set to default. I will make sure it's on default before I do the video test. Video quality, low, normal, and fine, or high. So with that being said, I can do the camera test, but not now because it's late at night as usual. So I'll have to splice it in for you all and you can have a look at what this wonderful camera can do on this Nokia 8900E. Okay, testing video recording on the Nokia 8900E. I think this camera is slightly better than the uh, cheapo DSLR of Wish. I think. Maybe. I could be wrong. I'm also recording right when the sun's setting as well, so I can't see anything on the screen. Through the brick wall, which looks very dull and plain, and Stuart's just chilling as he does. I come out here three days later and there's like ten lemons. And a lonely one somewhere there. Okay, and testing video recording on the actual Nokia 8800. I don't know if it looks better or not. I can't tell. We'll see during editing. I don't even know how long I can record for before it will tell me that I can't record anymore because it's only got 64 meg of internal storage. I know it's very dark, but everything is on default. I have no idea. I can only record for like 30 seconds before it stops. So, um, yep, there's Stuart, there's Lemon. Uh, I think that's all you're going to be able to see. Sorry. If it went to plan, then you've seen photos and video from this device, as well as this device, just for a comparison, because why not? The next thing we need to do is test the speaker. So while we tested the speaker just before with the ringtones, we may as well try it with some lovely, relaxing music from Doom Eternal. So, of course, we will start with Doom Hunter. There's a couple of other ones on here, but I don't know if they're going to be any copyright ones or not. They're all Chinese ones, but I could play them. What the flying fuck? Ah, oh, that's better. Yep. Wait, we'll come back to them. That wasn't the Hitler speech, was it? Oh, okay. Alright, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Speaker test. At absolute full maximum volume, the only thing they fear is you by Mick Gordon from Doom Eternal. Let's go. This is very unimpressive. 
Yeah, no. Uh, bass is not one of its strong suits. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Here we go. Bass drop. Yeah, let's just say you're not really made for playing anything past ringtones. 95.9 .9 we got to. We can actually come to Media Player, where there's videos on here. I'll play that. Whoa! Is that from Too Fast, Too Furious? Hang on. No, it's not. It's from Bad Boys. My bad. Ha! My bad. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, funny. Uh... Would I get a copyright complaint for that? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, what's the next one? I did see on the memory card there's one from the Matrix. This might be the one. Demonetization. So the other video that was in here was from the previous owner, which only went for one second, so that doesn't matter. But the other videos are located within the root directory of the micro SD card. There's a folder called 8800, and in there, there's videos of dolphins. Kosu Ko Kuk? Kuk. Okay. Uh, the AVI file is the uh, is the Matrix one, which is not going to play. I don't know why this is on here, but anyways. Dolphins. Is it going to be dolphins? And this is a documentary on dolphins and their wonderful nature to swim about in the ocean with all the other dolphins. Oh, I got a free documentary with it. That's pretty cool. It's in like 120 by 120, but that's okay. Uh, Kodu Coke... Yeah, no, just play it. Can't be that bad. Ah, oh, it's uh, got a website there. Whoa. Oh, it, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. There is a bunch of other folders on here, like uh, images. That's empty. Ebook has a bunch of actual ebook files, but you can't open them on this device because it doesn't have any ebook applications. Uh, UU Map, which is for obviously a map based service for Beijing and China and Shenzhen. Hope I said that right. Uh, but there's no app for it. You could probably put Java apps on here. Uh, I've pressed multiple buttons again. Hang on. It talking about Java stuff. I did put some jar files on here, but I don't think anything's going to happen with them. I think we've just literally just broken the phone because it just lagged. That's it. Okay. Opening that file does not work. So I'm needing to come to apps maybe to install one. So in Java, does it come up? No. I wonder if there would be a way to install Java games. There might be a specific folder that the Java games need to go into or something, I have no idea. But there you go, that is the Nokia 8900E, or what it probably would have been the clone of a second version of the 8800 if a second version ever came out. But, you know, they've got their similarities. You know, the same sort of little lip just there and the notch sort of thing but obviously they're two completely different kettles of fish there when it comes to the mechanisms but you know there they are there if there was a second version which on wikipedia it did say that there was an 8801 but it was like a china exclusive one or something like that but there was no actual second version of this they went from this to that that's one of the other 8800 variants as far as i know there's no actual 8900e it's just this clone and that's basically it but if you want to learn the specs of said clone, you might want to pause the video here and have a read of them. This is the best I'm going to get to spec-wise. I'm going to guess the LCD at probably 240 by 320. Could be less. I'm not too sure. And the camera, well, I'll base that on the megapixels as well. But that, my friends, is going to do it for the 8900E review. 
this phone is a clone of a Nokia phone second form that didn't come out. And well, that's pretty much it. I love this. Honestly, it is still as cool as it was back then. It's still cool now. For me to have one is just amazing. And the fact that you can still buy batteries online for it is just even cool. These phones should get a revival because how cool would this be with like a full on touch screen and I don't know, just like you could slide it up and it just look cool and I don't know, man, I'm old school, I like old school things and this is old school and this is worth a lot of money so um, don't come and rob me because this is one of my prized possessions. I just love the mechanism, man, it's just it's so nice and smooth. It's the closest thing I'll ever get to owning a BMW. Uh, it feels bad, man. It feels bad. I hope you enjoyed this teardown look at exploration of the 8900E, as well as a little demonstration of the 8800E. Let me know down in the comments if you have owned an 8800 over the past, or if you do own one, and what you think of this, and if Nokia should do a revival of it. And we're not talking about the Nokia 8 Sirocco edition, not that, but like in this sort of form factor sort of thing, if you would want something like that. I don't know. Anyways, I've got a bunch of Nokia phones on my desk, and now I've got to clean up everything. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And of course, I will see you in the next video, whatever that may be. I'm not too sure what it'll be at this stage, but just stay tuned because you never know what I'll upload next. And um, be good people. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. I could do this all day. How futuristic would that have been? Phones ringing out in public. Boom. Answer it like that. Oh, man. And now we just have slabs for a phone. Hey, look, everyone. I have a slab. Look how cool this was. And this. Not so much you. Yeah, man. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.